Hello and praise the Lord. How are you doing? We are doing fine. This is another wonderful Wednesday that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. I believe that our viewers and our listeners, you have been doing well for the past one week. It's another privilege to gather again for the worship hour. So Karibuni Sana, we are going to begin our today's session with a word of prayer and we'll continue in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you for this opportunity that you have given us to come and discuss that which you have placed in our hearts concerning worshipers, concerning music. We commit ourselves to you asking that your Holy Spirit will lead us and will guide us. We pray for every viewer and every listener that, Lord, you'll give them wisdom, you'll give them insight, even as they listen in. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we believe. Amen. 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 So I would love to give this opportunity to our wonderful panelists to say hi to us before we get to know what's up for today. In Jesus' name, we can begin with Dennis. Welcome, sir. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. How are you doing? Excellent. We are well. We also hope you're well there at home. It's always an honor to be here as we delve more into the um, toolkits and the resources that we as worshippers, children of God, can use to be more effective in the house of God. Be blessed as we learn together. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Good to see each and every one of you. What Good do you say? You. What do you say? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. <laughs> 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 wow, we bless the Lord for today, and I'm happy and expectant, ready to learn. Awesome. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on the part of the world you're watching us from. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. I'm excellent today. I am blessed of the Lord, and my heart is so, so ready to receive and to also give as the Lord enables by His wonderful Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow, amazing. Those are our wonderful panelists for today. And Are we bless supposed to say our names? The Lord. You will say them next time. <laughs> 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 you will say them next time. Right. We have Dennis, we have Eunice, we have Sam, and we have our host Njama, and myself, I'm Caroline. All right, Muriuki, Caroline. Yeah. I bless the Lord for... His goodness and his faithfulness, he has been so good to me. Amen. So today's uh, topic, we are continuing with what we have been discussing about the worshippers toolkit. And we say that there are some resources that are found in the worshippers toolkit. And the first one we discussed was the word of God. The second one was the Holy Spirit, which we have discussed now for several episodes. Please make sure you get back to our YouTube channel to check out if you've not tuned in so that you can catch up with us. And today we are going to discuss a very important resource in the worshippers toolkit and that is the music repertoire, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I would love to invite the servant of the Lord, Njamangugi, who is going to take us through that session. So, uh, so let's tune in. If you are taking your notebook, please take it. Uh, let's focus. Let's concentrate. I believe it's going to be amazing. Let's uh, get to know what is it about the music repertoire for a worship minister or for a music minister. So welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. I thought you would almost sing. <laughs> as, the, as the viewers and listeners are, are looking for their notebooks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we bless the Lord. Man. Jama is my name. And I bless the Lord for the opportunity to come to you again. Our listeners and viewers, we appreciate you so much. And the whole panelist here. We bless the Lord for the wisdom that he has continually released in us right. to be able to communicate to all of us so that we can learn together. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe just a brief of uh, what Caro has said, just adding a few things to it, is that um, our desire and uh, goal is to build one another because mm -hmm. the calling that we have is so noble mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that if we are not properly equipped, the enemy can find an avenue of using that which is 
truly noble for very destructive purposes. You're right. Mm -hmm. And as we learn today, looking at the a rich song repertoire as one of the resources that we need in our toolkit, uh, I was asking myself, why is church music so important? Yet, we have a lot of other gospel songs that are sung outside. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that is key is that when we come together as a church, whatever happens in that congregation mm. is like authenticated. Mm. It's like what we believe in. It's like the real thing. Right. You know, um, you can hear many things out there, mm -hmm. but what authenticates something is a place of authority where it is done. Mm. And the church mm. has that authority where right. the body of believers are gathering. So whatever we agree, you remember that verse that says, whatever you agree on earth mm. <laughs> mm. to bind, it right. shall be bound in heaven. And whatever right. you lose on earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. Right. Mm. So when, if we allow anything to come and be adopted in the church, mm -hmm. be it a teaching through preaching, be it a song through singing, or any other thing that we allow, a dance, mm -hmm. then we have qualified that to be part of what is right. And you cannot like later tell the congregants, mm -hmm. this is wrong. <laughs> Because you've already sanctified mm. and mm. given legal, right. legality to whatever mm. happened during the church service. Right. But, and that is why, in as much as there are so many songs that are out there, current and old, mm. we must be careful on how we choose them. And we have addressed this matter in the past, mm. but mm. want to look at it. And uh, as we look into this conversation before I bring you in, Allow me to just take us through a very small journey, if, that, if there is a word like that, mm. about where this thing all begins. Remember, we keep saying that as worship team members, worship leaders, song ministers in churches, whatever you want to call yourself, mm. we are teachers in music and we'll never stop saying that. Mm. And listen to Jesus uh, commanding the disciples while he was living in Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says that, Go ye, therefore, teach ye, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the law, in the name of the Father, the, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. That is the command of every born-again believer. Mm. Mm -hmm. The disciples in compliance to this command, mm. they did not veer off the tracks. Right. And we read in Acts, Acts 2.42, where the Bible says that they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles, or what they call the apostles' doctrine. And this doctrine was based on what Jesus had mm. instructed them in Matthew. Mm. Mm. If we look at Paul, looking at the way he delegated how the ministries of uh, ministering to the congregation in Ephesians 4, 11 to 12, the Bible says, and it was he who gave some to be what? Apostles some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. So as a musician, you fall right there squarely as a teacher, whether you like it or, or you don't. Right. Because whatever you are singing and leading the congregation or playing, mm -hmm. the rhythms, the melodies and everything, mm -hmm. you are teaching people. You're right. So you are a teacher. You fall right here. Why? Verse 12 says, to equip the saints for work, for works of ministry and to build mm. 
the body of Christ, Christ. Right. to build. Right. But two things can happen when we are not careful about the things, this richness we want to talk about. Two things can happen that can be either destructive mm. or constructive. constructive. Mm. Right. When we either spread truth or heresy mm. through music. Right. Mm. Yeah. And today I want us to ask ourselves as, as we look into this. A very simplistic question, but very instrumental and starting with you, Sam. Mm. What, in essence, what is a gospel song? Mm. If you are to look at it, just in simple terms. In simple terms? It's, it's a song that preaches the gospel. What is a gospel? The gospel, <laughs> now that depends on you because uh, we, have, we, we can have right gospel and wrong gospel. I look at it as we Christians, it's all about preaching Jesus. The four gospels according to um, the writer that was writing. The gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Mark. So the true gospel is a gospel of sharing that the, the very nature and the purpose of Jesus Christ here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Eunice, just carrying it over, should we then just be singing the words in those gospels that Sam is talking about? Matthew, 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 Mark, Mark, Luke, Mark and John. Luke, and John. Matthew, so, Mark, should we John. just be singing those words from paper to song to make it gospel? Oh, wow. <laughs> should we just... <laughs> wow, wow, that's a good question. Should we just sing what is written on it? Okay. You know... I'm just asking myself, I, I love the question that you ask, Sam, what is the gospel? And people have different definitions, and it is well we, we choose to honor their definitions. But I would say, because the Bible has instructed us, the only thing that directs us is the word of God. And we already tackled that, that everything we should sing is the word, because that's what aligns us. And as musicians, not as musicians, as worship ministers or whatever title, whatever we are singing, we intend to build one another. That's what we said. We intend to build one another. And this building, we are not building out of what we think. We are not building out of anything else. The person who is helping us build, it is Christ. In fact, it is him building through us. So we should see, okay, not word by word, but as you see, Christ says that he's the one building the church, not us. So we should sing that, and it is Christ who should help us navigate of how to do it, because we want him to build the church through us. We want to build, we, we don't have the ability to build, to build the church. It is the one in us who has the ability to build the church. So he's the one to help us use these words in the gospel to build one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Adding to that, allow me to add a Bible verse in the book of Mark chapter number 1 verses 14 and it says after John was put into prison, Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. That is a gospel we're preaching. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Mark 1 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Carol, in your own understanding as, as Sam has again expounded what Eunice has said, it is easier for us to just assume that everyone knows what gospel is all about. In your own understanding, what is this gospel we are talking about? And then how does it end up becoming a song? Then we can call it a gospel song. <laughs> okay, thank you. I believe that uh, we, like some began by saying, we can be having a lot of gospels out there. But now we are speaking about the true gospel, which is the gospel that Christ brought, which is the gospel of the kingdom of God, which we can only find in the word of God. So I believe in our singing, everything that we sing should be in line with the gospel, that is, should be in line with what is written in the word. If we want to sing 
true gospel and the real gospel and the original gospel, not necessarily word by word from the scripture, <laughs> but it simply means whoever is singing, when they are composing their songs, they really need to have the understanding of what the word says so that whatever they will be saying, whatever concepts they will be putting out there, it will not be controversial to what the word of God stands for. Yeah, because I'm wondering, Kim, you know, the devil knows the word, and he, he did not go to Jesus just once. Mm. Actually, he began knowing the word before Jesus came into the picture when he tempted Eve, mm -hmm. quoting the word. So, People can use the word, and people have used the word. Mm. So, gospel song, according to you, mm -hmm. what does it mean? <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, l let me start by saying that it is very important for me to echo what you have just said, that people can just speak and assume they are actually singing the gospel, when actually they are contradicting or fighting the same gospel unawares. To an extent, even you can use the name of Jesus in your song. And in the end, when we are up there, Jesus says, uh, you tell him, I sang this song in your name. I, I mentioned Emmanuel, Elohim, and all these other names. And he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I do not know you. So it is not in as much as speaking or saying it, it is, an, it is in the believing of it and living it. Mm -hmm. It is the conversion, the transformation of your mind and your spirit and all your faculties to the extent of you are in God's will, God's perfect will, which brings us back to our resource number two, which is the Holy Spirit, because he will help you do that. So according to me, um, I believe the gospel is the good news. The Bible says, and I send you to preach good news to the poor, poor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the healing to the, uh, to the sick and uh, liberty to the oppressed. This is the good news. To declare the ear, acceptable ear of the of Lord. The Lord. So for you to be able to preach the gospel, it means one, you understand that you are being sent to people who are one, vulnerable, people who are bound, people who are oppressed, all right? And the only message that will be able to bring sense or liberty or transformation is the acceptable message of the Lord, which is the acceptable ear of the Lord, right. bringing us to what Sam has just mentioned, the kingdom, mm -hmm. the kingdom come. That is the gospel, that there is another life, a new life. There is good news. We can be free. We can live to the fulfillment fulfillment of our purposes, um, eternal life, you know, the blessings of God. This is the acceptable year of the Lord for us to manifest in that area. So I believe that is the gospel to me. Because the reason I'm asking this, for any foundation of something rich, <laughs> there must be the essence of it, the mm. solid thing about it, right. what makes this a cup is its shape. It's not a plate. Right. Though it may be something that you can pour something into, it's not a plate because there are features that describe it. Right. Because um, there are many words that are used in the Bible, deception, heresy, those kind of things. And the problem is, <laughs> the, the, you know, something fake looks almost <laughs> similar <laughs> To the original. Yes. Right. <laughs> and I think we have often said that for you to know the original, you don't need to study the fake. Mm -hmm. You need to know the original. The original. Wow. How, uh, my question is, because mm. for us to be able to have this wisdom and understanding to be able to make choices with or without our pastors present, mm. because we don't need, I don't think a worship leader who is mature needs to be babysat. Right. So that when you collect songs, you take to your bishop or pastor to ask them whether mm -hmm. this is right or wrong. I, I, I think we must grow ourselves to the level where the pastor does not need to come asking you questions. Mm. You're already mature enough mm. to be able to know that this is the right song. So that after you sing it, you know some of mm. these things, you can pull them 
without the knowledge of the audience including mm. and the audience happens to be the pastor and askia two song imeend but they are disturbed but they don't know what to do about it mm -hmm. until the service is over if you are streaming you have to cut off that mm -hmm. thing because the leader or the team did not were not able to understand mm -hmm. what was right mm -hmm. from wrong mm -hmm. so the reason i'm asking this is sometimes something deceptive looks like the truth because you can throw in jesus there you can throw in some sweet words philosophies of men inside and actually if you if you study the letters of paul there are places where he's arguing for the gospel because of how some people had adopted other things one of it is galatians where we see even him calling them <laughs> foolish and asking them who beseeched them mm. and what they were believing was not very far from the truth, the truth yeah. because the gospel came through the mm. judaism right culture right and religion so they were like they wanted everyone wanted to be justified sam i'm coming mm. back to you yes, sir. so that we take this from where we are after we laid this good foundation and mm. i appreciate every observation that we need right. for a person in marayake kwanza they've never had something like the gospel because it is normally used good news what are we saying mm. what is the basis of it mm. what forms that story because i mean look imagining it's you are watching a bulletin there are news you are expecting so what is this so i think uh, kim has talked about it but in simple terms for mm. a person that may not be deep mm. allow me to go back to what dennis said and we're going to read that bible verse dennis where is that bible verse luke i think chapter luke. four of us yes look for let's read that bible verse uh, i'm going to narrate it in two ways and let's start from there please look for i think uh, where was so look for is more of um where he was being tempted it starts with where he was being tempted right yeah after the temptation where he took up the scroll yeah uh, yeah there came to nazareth us. sabbath day synagogue and isaiah here it is look for 18 mm -hmm. the spirit of the lord is upon me start from there the very first statement the spirit of the lord, of the lord is upon is me, upon me. Mm -hmm. One of the ways to understand the good news is that the spirit of the Lord must be upon them because he has anointed me consecrated me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to, to the, the blind, blind. Mm -hmm. to set at liberty those who are oppressed preach the gospel to the poor that is physical basically the bible says that jesus was made poor that we become rich okay mm -hmm. so one of the things i understand about the good news is when the lord preaches the gospel to the poor they never remain the same no there's something imparted in them they never remain poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted i see the mental aspect of it The good news brings peace, joy, contentment. That is the good news. For you to know that this is the good news, immediately you hear it, you will receive joy, peace, contentment, identity in Christ, knowing that I am not as people might say I am, as my background might say I am, but I am who Jesus says I am. So there is that contentment, that healing if you've been heartbroken the moment the message of christ the word of god is life the spirit is life when it comes to you you will definitely feel relieved mm -hmm. as simple as that he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives mm -hmm. how does proclamation of liberty set one free that is the uniqueness of the gospel if indeed you want to set someone free All you got to do is go open that chain and lock it or break it and then they come forth. Mm. But here 
It's about the proclamation. Mm. The proclamation. That is the key. It's not a physical stuff. So for you to identify the good news, whatever is proclaimed must showcase liberty mm. from all kind of bondages, all kind of depression, all kind of attacks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And recovery of sight to the blind. Mm. This basically shows these signs and wonders. They shall follow them, them who preach the word. Jesus says, and the Bible says that, and they, they will go preaching the gospel and signs and wonders will follow them, approving to the word that they are preaching. Mm-hmm. Therefore, for you to identify that this is truly the good news, signs and wonders shall be there. A hundred. And to set the liberty to those who are oppressed. This is repeated again. Mm-hmm. It's liberty to them who are oppressed, them who are downcasted. And in addition to that, as we initially started by saying the book of Mark chapter number one, verses 18, that the kingdom of God, uh, what was he saying? Um, I'm, losing, I'm losing my th- line of thought. Mark one, what did we say about it? Guys, remind me. Mm. Mark one, 18. <laughs> Let's check it out. I'm trying to recall. Let's go back there real quick. Mark? We're in 18. There's a trail of thought that I would love us to... Was it Mark uh, 118? No, no, it wasn't Mark 118. The one that we were talking about, Jesus... Um, the kingdom. Preaching the kingdom, yes. Yes, thank you, I've remembered. And after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee preaching what? The okay. kingdom of God. Every good news must be the kingdom of God, okay? It must be the kingdom of God. Now, the question is, now here, here it's coming. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, the Bible says in Romans 14, 17, please correct me if I'm wrong, that the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, yeah. but of righteousness, peace, peace and joy, joy. In okay, the in the Holy Ghost, the spirit and its fruits. Righteousness is about standing right, is about principles that are not based on what people say, but what the word of God says. Peace and joy. Those are the fruits of the good news. Every time the good news is preached, there must be righteousness. Whatever they speak, you must see uprightness into it. As according to the standards of God, there must be joy being put out there. There must be peace. And again, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verses 20. The same kingdom of God that Jesus is preaching. That's the good news. It says, for the kingdom of God is not about a matter of talks only, but of power. Mm but of power. So, in summary, the kingdom of God is about um, transformation in aspect of we, our personal lives, physical lives. Talk about what you need. You are poor. God made you rich. Talk about the, uh, the natural man in terms of your mindset, in terms of the way you feel in your heart, depression, anxiety, all those things. For you to understand that this is the good news, immediately it's proclaimed. There's a shift in terms of your mental state, in terms of your heart. And last but not least, there's a shift also in terms of the spirituality. Because the good news is also very spiritual. There must be a showcasing of power. So when you combine the fruits and the power, you'll find a very, very wonderful balance. And you'll be able to define and know that this is definitely the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Eunice, are we singing the gospel all the time? Every time that we, we are ministering, are we keen on th- those things that you've raised are very pertinent, important, key, fundamental, any word that talks about that. Um, In our song selection, do we play this in mind or we think about this is popular, this is a new song, you know, Uh, this one will talk about what I want people to know, what informs us in our peak. Wow, wow. Before I answer that question, I have a question on my mind. Mm. You started with speaking about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Would we please also define, let's also help our viewers understand Mm -hmm. about this doctrine of Jesus Christ because you just mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Doctrine. So you brought doctrine. Uh, We brought gospel. So is there a difference between the gospel and the doctrine of Jesus? Someone can maybe strike a balance or it's the same thing. Please. You know, the, this doctrine that, that uh, the apostles are talking, remember this is reported speech of how the, the conduct of the disciples, the followers of 
the the people who got born again were mm. falling what were they basing their their faith on mm -hmm. they continued on the apostles doctrine the apostles doctrine is what i started by saying mm. it is based on the teachings of the bible according to matthew 28 verse 18 to mm. 20 mm. initially if you read the the words of jesus mm. there is a there is something about love your mm. neighbor remember you talked about how the two the ten commandments hung mm. on two commandments mm. and he did not rewrite the commandments mm. but it was very clear mm. So, the the doc the apostles did not come up with something new. Mm -hmm. It was the instruction they were yeah, they given to. Mm -hmm. What they received is what they were giving. Mm -hmm. Now that is quantified mm -hmm. to be like the way you'd say a unit of study mm -hmm. in a course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every course has got its structure. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. their basis of teaching. If you look at the book of Acts. Mm -hmm after they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will see, if you read the whole chapter, you'll see the outline before we get to the summary of verse 42. How mm. Peter brings an argument to the listeners who thought that they were drunk in the morning. Right. He brings out of how Jesus came as the Lamb of God, the way he was given to his own. They refused, they rejected him, they killed him on the cross and right. all that. right. But he rose again. That is the whole of it, the mm -hmm. whole teaching of it. But it mm -hmm. does not end there. It mm -hmm. goes with demanding the demands of that sacrifice mm -hmm. and teaching that everyone must repent and mm -hmm. be born again. Now to enter into that kingdom you are mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. Allow me to add something on that also. The apostolic doctrine entails the messianic... The, the messi what? Messianic. The messiahship. <laughs> That's what I want to say of Jesus Christ, the anointed one. It talks about crucifixion, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is exactly what the apostles were teaching. Mm -hmm. It talks about also the second coming of yeah. Jesus Christ. All right. And last but not least, it talks about fellowship with one another, the brethren. So basically, uh, there might be more, but this is a small thing that I've been able to, um, to collect. The, the, uh, talk about the initial reason as to why God created human and why he brought them on earth and then they fell. Please, have time, go read what Stephen was sharing. Immediately he was arrested after they blamed him of doing a lot of stuff. He will, he's literally talking from the times of Abraham, if not Moses. And he comes to the very purpose of Jesus coming on earth and dying on the cross for our sins. And in addition to that, the apostolic doctrine entailed the aspect of the breaking of bread. Allow me to finish with saying this. Acts chapter number 2 verses 42. And they continued steadfastly mm. in the apostles' doctrine. That's the, the learning of who Jesus is and sharing that which Jesus wanted to share. The, continu the continuity of Jesus' ministry. And in fellowship, the oneness, the togetherness. Jesus says, above all things, love stands. It never fails. Pay all other debts, but the day to love, the debt of love will never fail. Fellowship and breaking of bread, the solership, and in prayers. And before Eunice, you come in, the, that breaking of bread is symbolic of what uh, Nani Sam has talked about, the second coming, because Jesus instructed us to have that holy communion, mm. the breaking of bread until mm. he comes. It, it is. Come on. It is a continuous process yes. that reminds us of his second coming. And if you want to really, I know we come from different yes. denominations. If you want a summary of the Apostles' Doctrine, mm. read the Apostles' Creed. It mm. gives you the summary of what it's mm. all about. Wow. Hope we've answered your question. About. Yeah, because it's, it's really good to understand when we are saying the doctrine of Jesus Christ. What are we saying? Because... Eh, this world we are living, there are a lot of doctrines. So mm. if you don't know the correct doctrine, thank mm -hmm. you for that question. Yeah. If you don't know the correct doctrine, you will end up grasping some other things, thinking mm. that that's the truth, but unfortunately yeah, not. that's not the truth. Right. Remember what you said, if you want to know something that isn't legit, first know the legit. Mm. Then when something that is not legit comes, you'll be like, no, no. So I pray that God helps us understand 
Mm. It's actually let let's give ourselves to God so that he mm. can educate our spirits and we can be learned spirits. Mm. We understand the doctrine of Jesus Christ because mm. if we don't understand oh mm. there are a lot of doctrines a lot a lot. So back to the question you had asked me. The right. question was in this era we are living are the are the different churches we have singing the gospel Now on that question I cannot say yes or no because we have we all come from different churches even the way we are seated and we we now how do I put this we all we I don't want to see to say we sing according to the way we understand but I believe every church every we all have different now how do I even put this mm. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to be like okay mm. I can say that we are all singing the doctrine of Jesus because the question is how do you understand the doctrine of Jesus mm. because we all have different understandings and we have all given ourselves to the word in different measures right so i would say that i i don't want to say that there maybe that i want to to assume there are churches that sing the gospels mm. and there are churches that don't yet sing the question is how do you understand the gospel because we all understand the the gospel differently and that's one thing that we all have to appreciate different mm. churches have understand the gospel differently and how i pray we just invest time and study the gospels but then that's a right. challenge we really right. need to study the gospel so that we can understand this gospel that we are singing because there is a fault i i'm like do we really know the truth because if we know what the gospel is singing the gospel will not be a di- will not be a problem but if we do not know what the gospel is singing the gospel will be a problem because see if i only know the gospel according to what i've been taught i've not read it myself mm-hmm. like i depend on someone to teach me the gospel mm. that's what i'll sing exactly but if i if i take i if i take it a higher a notch higher and study the gospel from myself mm. that's what i'll see yeah. uh, the reason i'm uh, i'm asking these questions is you know caro this thing is very serious and um and we better know that we are not performers in church we are teachers what we bring right. in we lay the build as i started by saying or destroy mm. and what, is, what did jesus say mm. was will be this person who teaches these young ones the wrong mm. things they would mm. rather a stone a milling stone be put around their necks right. and be sunk mm. Mm. imagine mm. caro we could a milling stone and these milling stones were not something light the one samson was pushing mm-hmm. basically if you read the story of samson yeah. after his eyes were gogged out mm. so why are we saying this because ignorance is not defense anywhere not in the natural or supernatural mm. world what you don't know sometimes can hurt you <laughs> you're right you're right amakaro that is too deep because i'm thinking if you don't know there is gravity and we keep saying this then you jump from a rooftop yeah. and you don't know the rules of aerodynamics and all those kind of things will you fly no you won't the the, <laughs> the, the gravity will not have mercy on you because you didn't no. know why are we saying what we are saying if whatever we bring into the house of the lord requires us to be well informed of why we are bringing a particular messaging through a song mm. through playing an instrumental mm. so that it's not church is not another ground of performance it's a sacred place right why is it sacred because people have set it apart yeah. from all other things yeah. right right so caro my my question to you may be what are these points we should look into while we are vetting a song for church ministration what 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 message should it bear thank you it's a good question you have reminded me of a scenario when we were in 
primary school that a teacher taught us um, a Swahili shairi. And it was very good Swahili. See, like Swahili, and you know, what is in And it was very nice. And you know, as kids, you are excited uh, reciting the, the shairi. And we went and recited the shairi. And later, the head teacher was like, Who taught you that, that shairi? It's teacher so and so. So that shairi, it had a wrong message. <laughs> And we didn't know, we didn't know it. Juni Kiswahili tu mzuri me ime nini. Na sisi because sisi we are learners, we didn't know. So we just sang what we were, we were taught. But it was a, it was a bad message. By the way, it was a, there was a problem between the teacher and the management of the school. Oh, big, big one. Yes. Uh, so the, the, <laughs> nini, the, the, the shair was bad. It was bad. And we said it so well because oh. we didn't know. In front of the whole school. Yeah, in front of the whole school. Confident. And we didn't know. So maybe this is what most of us are doing yeah. because we are singing things that we do not know. But now we are worship leaders. We are, we are believers. We are grown-ups. We are not kids. You have to be very right. much aware of what you are singing. Right. You have to be very much conscious of what you are telling these people. Right. And on that same same note... This could be my question even as you are picking up those songs. Mm. What do you understand about those songs? Mm. Nisawa, it's, it's okay, it's trending. You yourself, personal, live alone your church and, and mm. your doctrine and all that. Mm. You yourself as a worship leader, you have seen this song, you have picked it up. What do you understand? Is it a message that you love to pass to other people? I am basing it on the scriptures, on the word of God, on the mm. truth. Does it have any, any, any traits of anything to do with the truth of the word of God. Because you will only teach what you understand. Yeah. You will not teach what you do not understand because it will not make sense. You know, what happens to teachers before they go and teach, they are first trained. So that when they go and teach and learners will be asking questions, they will be in a position, because they understand what they are doing, they will be in a position to answer any question, even whatever they were not prepared for. Because they already have the knowledge. So even as you are selecting that song, have you taken your time to sit, listen, it's okay, it's trending and everyone else is singing it. Have you listened to it? Do you understand what it means? What message is it carrying? Would you love to pass that message to your to, to, to the audience or to your church members? Those are things that you're supposed to look at. And another thing, how is this song resonating with your spirit? Is it resonating with your spirit? If it is not, just leave it, let it trend, let those who are singing sing. Because if you don't reason, remember, uh, our singing, since it's not performance, it's a spiritual activity. We are offering it as a sacrifice unto the Lord. So if it, had, it has not synchronized with your spirit, let it be. If you are, you are not going to sing spirit, let it be. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a spiritual activity. Everyone else, there is a lot of singing that is happening outside there. Let those who are singing and I let them sing. We have more than enough people who are singing out there. So if you're, and you're a worshiper, you're ministering to the people of God. You're ministering on the altar of God, this sacred place that has been set apart. So if it's not going to, be, to align with your spirit, if it's not going to align with the word of God, if you're not going to understand what this song means, leave it. Don't pick it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the calmness of that. It's, it's a soft rebuke. Mm. And that one calls for a seller moment mm. for you to ponder and to think. Because the things we are talking about here mm. are very serious and critical. And uh, coming to something that I've just remembered, something that Uni said. You know, we are one body with one spirit, according to Ephesians chapter 4, mm -hmm. we are not, we come from different denominations, but we are one, one body, the body of Jesus Christ. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ is not coming for our denominations, by the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> in as right. much as they are good for right. administration and order. You're right. But the body of Christ, as Carol, you've put it very well, because the spirit of God that we have in our hearts is one. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have a different spirit from my fellow believer if I'm born again. Yeah. Right. It is one spirit. Yes. One spirit. And, and that thing you've brought about, that our spirits should be alive. And, and Dennis, I want you to address this because should really, I, I'm thinking, except maybe unless we are dealing with cultic things. You know, there are those cults that have built themselves and we don't want to address mm. ourselves to that. Mm. We, are, we are talking mm. about worship in church, the church of Jesus Christ as we have well put it. And I'm looking at why the difference? Why should, shouldn't I be able mm. to come and commune in your church? Or shouldn't you be able to just come and be able to commune in my church? And we have I have spiritual benefits. Mm -hmm. If, mm -hmm. if, and I'm putting an, an if with bold and underlined and capital, mm. if we are governed by the same spirit, mm. unless we are picking things from different pools. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe as you're answering this, would you maybe, have we dug ourselves cisterns? Ajua, we have assistant of assistant of my church. Yani kaleka kapao kapond. Kanatoaga maji fulani. You know maji maji. If we dig water from Nairobi and another one digs it from another town, sometimes it may not have the same pH and everything. Yeah. Mm. True. So is it is it that what we are doing, or are we drinking from the same pool? <laughs> Thank you very much. I am so. Enlightened, by the way, by the very many amazing responses. And this is something, this is a very important topic, especially for ministers whom we, you know, we are entrusted with the gospel and the good news. And I was just seated here and I was like jumping out of my seat because of some of the things which uh, you guys were mentioning especially in regards to doctrines and the gospel and all that. So, are we, why, why is so much difference in churches? Let me call them churches. I don't want to talk about denominations, or, but churches, the body of, of Christ. Um, let me start by saying, the Bible says that he gave to some uh, prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors, teachers, and apostles for the perfecting of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. right? For the perfecting of the body of Christ, yes. not a denomination, yeah. right? So if you have an apostle, it is in regards to the perfecting of a particular aspect or area of that church or that person. But it does not mean that it is deviatory from the whole picture and essence of the church. So why are we really talking about doctrines and about, um, uh, you know, Jesus, who he is and all that? It's because, uh, let me start, let me just mention doctrines in simple terms. It means they surely believed, they surely believed of all believers, not some believers. We have the surely believed, that is what we call a doctrine. The death, resurrection, burial, uh, you know of Jesus Christ, that is assuredly believed of all Christians, without exception. Mm. Doesn't matter which arm or which, um, you know, which uh, apostolic, evangelistic, it doesn't matter, that is assuredly believed. The second surely believed, which is a doctrine, is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Then we have the doctrine of the eternal life, which God gave us through, to us through, the, through Jesus Christ by his death. Right? Those are surely believed of all believers. So if I come to your church, we should commune in that aspect. Unless it is not from the scripture, we will have deviatory responses. Or if it is led of selfish interest or the flesh. Right? Mm -hmm. Because we will have a problem. You, you guys will believe this, I'll believe this. Mm -hmm. So where is the system? supposed to be drawn from it's supposed to be drawn from the word of god mm -hmm. and we have made it very clear from the doctrine of the apostles there are things that they continually continued in mm -hmm. for fellowship yeah. for preaching 
you know, for weaning of souls to Christ. Mm. And there was no one who deviated from that part. Yeah. Mm. Even in case some of those who deviated, the Bible says, uh, I think it's Paul who said, whether they preach uh, of another person, because there, was, there were people who were saying, ah, Paul is not preaching the true gospel. He's the one who is preaching the true gospel. He said, regardless, Bora Jesus Akwe preached. Mm. That's the creed. Mm. Yeah. Regardless, Bora Jesus Akwe preached. preached. So why the difference? The difference is because we have refused to study. Yeah. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved mm. of all Christians. Yeah. It is good to read your Bible. It is good to memorize verses. It is good to have those verses which you can encourage people as you lead worship and as you lead praise. But you must desire to go deeper and delve in more. Mm. Because these doctrines are not superficial. Mm. Yesterday we will tell you about the Holy Spirit and how wonderful he is for you to be acquainted with him because he will provide you with resources to be more effective in your worship. Mm. But we have other aspects of the Holy Spirit that you must delve deeper by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The doctrine of Jesus Christ. It is only not, it not, it's not only in the death, resurrection, and ascension. Mm. We have Jesus Christ as the Son of Man. We have Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Yeah. All those are different offices of Jesus Christ. And they apply differently. Mm. But it is only in response to your knowledge of who he is. Yeah. So study the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Desire to know more. Go and delve deeper. What are these surely believed? Because that is the only way you can be able to have apologetics. Apologetics are, you know, the defensive mechanisms of defending your faith. Mm -hmm. If you stand before a Muslim, how do you defend your faith? Mm -hmm. If you go to a place where there's no Christianity, how do you stand in your faith? Or they will tell you this is more better because they are more knowledgeable in their own religion than you. Mm. And they will tell you, oh, Jesus is only, uh, was only born and he died and from then on we don't hear about him. But our so and so did this and this. This is what he says. This is what we follow and it works for us. You will be alienated. So the difference is because one, we don't study. Right. Two, we don't want to be informed right? Three, we don't have the Holy Spirit. Yani we don't want the Holy Spirit to teach us. We have him, but we have suppressed him. Mm -hmm. Because we want, this is what we, this, this is our way of life. And oh my goodness, mm. <laughs> you are bashed. Mm. And you will be taught everything, as Caro said, it is an empty place and anything can take its abode. Mm. So study study yeah, and uh, as we're almost coming to an end th this thing will have to continue but i want uh, <laughs> so that it will form part of our next conversation mm. on the richness that this toolkit as a resource mm. some yes sir um you know we we have a tendency because he has outlined some several doctrines mm. And it is your responsibility to know them if you are a believer. Mm. It's not anyone's responsibility. It's for your good anyway. Mm. Because what you don't know also can hurt you, as I said. Yeah. What you don't know, don't think you are safe because you don't know. Mm. You're right. You will mislead people and you will get somewhere you didn't expect. Mm. And I, I just want to, to, to say this because music is poetry. You can communicate this message in different uh, styles and everything. But for me, I'm concerned about the holistic presentation because the, if you are to look at, uh, <laughs> and I'm putting you to task, and yes. every one of us has, before mm. we, we turn the meeting back to Caro, mm. if you are to look at, uh, you've had an opportunity to lead worship in your church, and or you've, if you are not the one who's been on duty, for the last one or two, three months, you have participated in congregational music and everything. How often do you cover every, every part of the entire gospel? 
or are we only caught up on how we'll be rich to tabarikiwa our enemies will be defeated <laughs> and the devil is under our feet are we concerned about that we are going somewhere mm-hmm. jesus is coming again are, do we are we aware and conscious and alive and preparing ourselves to the coming of jesus or we are preoccupied with that which is human you know Mm-hmm. You can look at it you can throw your mind back and you don't have to say yes or no but what would be your counsel to every one of us mm. just you, we can every one of us can give a pick right uh, it, it's a simple question it's very simple based on if you truly know the doctrine that we're talking about and I'll answer it not based on my thoughts but based on the word and I'll answer it with a no you can't as an individual you cannot what can you not you cannot <laughs> in your singing bring out the whole aspect of the kingdom and the doctrine and the gospel do you know why is that is because we have been gifted differently if i can bring out everything then what's the essence of the other person it is for me to know where am i called specifically i'm talking about an individual where am i called specifically and i will excellently admonish that if i do my part you do your part you do your part now that's the body of christ i cannot be everything i cannot preach the whole gospel by myself in music i can't I cannot be or else I'll find myself stumbling. Do you know why? Because as according to the word, I have something specifically that I'm supposed to bring out even in my singing. You think about if everybody sang the same thing the same way. Live alone teaching and preaching as is, as in the way we know the preaching today. So, some of us have been called into the prophetic So if I go preaching about uh anxiety in the heart with songs I'll be confused. I'll I'll be like what's going on? People will be like are you okay? <laughs> I'm serious. Some of us have been called to cover, you know, like wait. Mm-hmm. So spiritual ascension there are people who are called into that. And then we're not called into it and this is where the division of the body of Christ is coming at. Just because you don't understand at the ARM doesn't mean it's wrong because you're not called into it. No, what are you called into it? What is the other person called into? If I'm called into ministering through the strings, that person who is saying, let me not say they're not they're not called because they're not playing an instrument. Mm-hmm. All right, just to make it simple, okay? Because if we go deeper into this, I think that, that's what we need to do next time. It might take us longer. Yeah, because the reason I'm asking you that, huh? and the reason why we need to inform our congregation is because you could be the only teacher of music this person we ever have mm-hmm. in this sense this person could only be getting a particular concept of the whole gospel mm-hmm. through that platform come again please but mm-hmm. you are only focused say on mental health <laughs> but this person to develop the person holistically mm-hmm. as a worship team or that is why a worship team is not based on one person right and we will expound on this how do we ensure that the congregation we are we are tasked to minister to is well fed we are not feeding on proteins alone on carbohydrates alone because we'll have a malnut what do you call that Mal- yeah that one mm. congregation that only knows one thing and you know we can't assume that our congregation will just watch tv for what we are not mm. feeding them on because they could fall on the wrong person mm. yet 
they are under our tutelage, mm. quote and quote, because they fellowship there. Mm. Yeah. So the essence of our not being fully equipped, what will, what, how will it affect them? Mm. Allow me to answer that, sir. It's by identifying the gifts and the enablement of edification of, of the uh, gifts of the Spirit in the church. We as a team, you might find that basically this church has been called to this kind of grace. In the whole church, and actually this takes us more to even further than the worship team only, because now here it brings the essence of priesthood. It's the responsibility of the priesthood to teach the word, and from teaching the word, you understand all the dynamics of the word, and through understanding all the dynamics of the word, different departments in a church will execute all those dynamics with the various graces that has been given unto them. I may not be able to, to sing about hospitality, but there's an usher at the door who might be able to showcase that hospitality until person's like, whoa, even before the word came by someone standing there, I already received hospitality. Comes to the other uh, departments. So it's about every person identifying Go back to the word, know what the word talks about the church, and then by the help of the spirit, understand what is it that God wants us to do, and then execute it from different departments. It's, it's actually more than us. So coming to the worship team and the music aspects, also the word will help us understand. When we know it, every worship leader will know what, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to lead according to the vision of the church based on the word? Eunice. Wow, you know, what's going on in my mind is we need to go beyond saying things because I heard you say we need to get beyond borrowing. Like, mm -hmm. uh -huh, I, I read something on a book, so I need to say this. So I had Carol say something, so I'm echoing what I had her saying when she's leading worship. We really need to, we really need hmm. to study the word and know what the word says because we I'm telling you the task, we better understand the task that we have as worship ministers. We really better understand our task because it's not a shallow task. Mm -hmm. Because if we keep on borrowing, borrowing, it's not, it's not, it's not helping the congregants. So we really, we really need to give ourselves to the ministry of the word. Let's allow the word to minister to us. Let's know what we are saying. Let's, eh, let's not just say anything that comes to our mind, anything that we hear people say, can you fast, wait, 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 be, eh, whatever you say is good, but I need to get back to the word and back it by the word. Whatever mm. I had you, it's good. I, I'm just like, God help me study the word. I really need to study the word of God and not just study. I just pray that the spirit of God opens the word that I may get to know it more. Because where? Standing there, I'm, I'm just getting another angle and I'm like, we really need to, we really need to know the word. Yeah. Carol, as, as, you, as you say this and what Nani is saying, Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things. Oh, we start with Dennis, Dennis. and then you will end. Mm. I was actually summing up my thoughts. Mm. But anyway. Um, holistic, holistic approach, mm. right? On our ministrations. Now, this is very delicate waters. I'm really trying to count my steps because um, I don't want to repeat what has been said, but let me just mention that one, let us as ministers and as worship ministers, you know, any ministry that you have been called to um, appreciate that in the body of Christ, we have um, people that have a social life, right? And they have a spiritual life. Um, loosely translated, they are physical and also they are spiritual, not adding the emotional aspect of it all. Now, all these things are part of who they are and who they become or what they were before they were born again. 
And all these things must be nurtured to conform to the standard of the word and to what God has called them to. So how do we holistically, right, grow? Let me come to a smaller version, my small team of two people in the praise and worship or the ushering department to become fully formed into what God has called them. One, it is important for us to foster or to encourage the reading of the word as Gabby has mentioned. Because this is our compass. It is our guideline. The word of God is our compass and our guideline. It is what shows us how we live, how we do, how we think, how we handle, how we socialize, the fellowship and all that. It is the holistic living of us, not only here on earth, but also with our, in our relationship with God. So let's promote, encourage the reading, the studying of the word of God. Secondly, um, we had mentioned earlier, why do we, have, do we have different spirits in the church? Do we have one spirit in this church, the other church, a different spirit, and we are all calling them the Holy Spirit? Of course not. So let us bring to that awareness that the Holy Spirit is one, and he works in you and me, both to will and to do. Right? And he's the guidance of how now we operate in this ministry. As some say, there's a possibility you cannot be the pastor and the usher and the worship team and all that. So the Holy Spirit will guide you to that particular arm or leg or eye or nose which you're supposed to be in that church to cater for that particular people. Right? right. Lastly, um, prayer. Prayer. We, especially who are called and we have been raised to a higher pedestal, prayer is an unnegotiable factor of ministry. I would dare say that prayer is life. If you don't pray, there's a possibility you don't have life. Mm -hmm. Because this is the fellowship, the koinonia, you know? All these things make sense in the aspect of prayer. Because now that is where the communion, the fellowship, the intercourse of the spirit, the word, and the son are all made manifest and perfected in that one person. So when you go there, you know, Gab has this problem. This is how I can handle it. Eunice, Carol, whoever else, they have this and that. So you will not be, maybe, ni tongues pekeake. If you don't speak tongues, please, kado, kando. The other one, no, mimi, niwa psalms pekeake. Ezekiel, mm -mm. that is the Old Testament. We are not in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you will know how to handle and bring all these things into conformity. Not for any other thing, but for the glory of God and for the edification of the body of Christ. Back to me. Yeah. Whoa, oh, thank you. What a moment in the worship hour. I know we've said a lot. We said a lot. And let me remind you our topic for today we were discussing. Rich song repertoire. Yes, as a toolkit in the worshipers toolkit. And one thing that I've learned from today's um conversation is that all these resources in this toolkit, they are related. Why is it that we have spoken more about the word, about the spirit, more than we have spoken about this rich song mm -hmm. repertoire? Because <laughs> yeah. they work yeah. hand in hand. Exactly. If you have the yeah. word, if you have yes. the spirit, you will not have the wrong song list and end up teaching people the wrong doctrine <laughs> and they end up delivering the wrong message to the people. <laughs> yeah. It will not happen because the spirit is there to lead you mm -hmm. and the word is the backbone of everything yes. that you are doing as a minister mm. and as a mm. worship leader. Mm. 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 So we cannot escape. All these things are, are, are related. They are related. As, as Dennis and some of us have mentioned that it's the same spirit. Yeah. Nisawa, the graces are different. Someone has this grace. But the word is the same word. The spirit is the same spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So so when we 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 cannot say that uh, because I'm like this even if you are doing it even if the grace is being dispensed differently the basis has to be from the word of God. Yes. It has to depend on the leading of the spirit. So I I'm really looking forward to continue with this topic as we continue uh, engaging more about the how can we have this rich song repertoire or how is it a resource in this worshipers toolkit so thank you so much you who has been tuning in uh, your your comments are very 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 much welcome your questions too let us know your mind what do you think what do you think about the rich song repertoire what do you think about this worshipers toolkit what item would you like us to 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 discuss what do you think should be there in this worshipers toolkit Yeah and we are going to get blessed together. So for today we are coming to the end of our session and we really thank God. It has been an amazing we can keep on engaging and engaging but for the sake of next time we are going to end at that. Mm. So we are going to pray. Uh, I'm going to pray and then some you're going to lead the prayer of anyone who is there and they want to receive Christ as the Lord and Savior over their lives you're going to lead them but before that let me pray first as we thank God for that session Father we thank you and we give you thanks mm-hmm. thank you for your insight thank you for your spirit that has led us thank you for the conversation that we've had today and we continue surrendering to you that your spirit will lead us you will give us wisdom you will give us insight lord we pray for our listeners and our viewers oh god that you're going to help each and every worship minister you're going to build them up in the word and in the fellowship with the spirit so that even the songs they select the songs they put in their list lord will be in a position to equip will be in a position to edify the body of christ they will not be enter entertainment songs we ask for more wisdom we ask for more leading of your spirit upon us oh lord and upon each and every one of us who is listening today in the mighty name of jesus we thank you and we commit ourselves to you continue building us up continue molding us continue lifting us from one level of knowledge to another all for the glory and for the honor of your name in jesus mighty name we do pray and we give thanks amen amen, amen. amen. receiving jesus christ is the activation of the adoption to sonship receiving jesus christ is coming from the worldly view of things to the kingdom view living a life as per the will of your creator as per the will of your maker please repeat these words after me i believe in your heart that jesus is lord and that the spirit of the lord is your guide from now hands forth lord jesus lord jesus i acknowledge i acknowledge you dying on the cross for my sins you are dying on the cross for my sins and your resurrection for my living and your resurrection for my living today i believe in my heart and i confess with my mouth and i confess with my mouth that jesus is lord jesus is lord that my life is new that my life is new i'm no longer the old i'm no longer the old that i've been washed I've been washed sanctified sanctified and put apart and put apart for the work of god for the work of god i am born again i am born again in jesus name in jesus name amen Amen. 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 So if you have said that prayer, please let us know from the comment section. You are now born again. Faith comes from hearing the word of God and by confessing with your mouth, you have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. So get a church, a Christ, a Bible believing church that you can fellowship and you can grow together. Please let us know that you have given your life to Christ. So thank you so so much for tuning in. May you uh, share this conversation be a blessing to someone, to your family, to your friend, to your worship team so that we can grow together in Jesus name. See you next Wednesday same time, same place. Bye bye. Bye bye.